Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I have a really nice video for you today. Even if you are a Bitcoin lover, you only want to know about Bitcoin technical analysis. Well, today I am going to be going through the most highly anticipated, hyped and requested altcoin of the moment. And that is Solana. Obviously, I put the poll over on Twitter. What do you want to see? And by far, the winner was Sol. People are absolutely loving this coin right now. I mean, I'm happy to cover Sol because I personally am also trading it. Uh, obviously, we had that. I mean, the past few months on this have been insane. We went from $20 to $200 in under two months. I mean, the rise on the coin has been absolutely crazy like got listed on Bybit and, and it kind of went it's, it's never looked back and uh obviously reaching that 200 dollar big 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 level of resistance obviously that 200 dollars we all in the end ended with a bit of a failed auction above it coming back below getting the back test and and pulling back um you know here on on, on the usdt chart i will be covering solana primarily against usdt tether because you know i'm trading it on Bybit and i trade it against tether i will also take a look at the spot uh, against Bitcoin as well. So we'll, we'll take a look at both of the Solana uh, charts here, focusing more so on, on the Tether pair, just because that's where I trade it. So uh, yeah, that, without further said ado, hope you really enjoy the video. My friends, my family, my champions, let's get into the analysis. This is what we love. And this is our enjoyment. Let's go. <laughs> So Solana, obviously, uh, originally, um, you know, I've been talking about this quite a bit, obviously, mainly inside of the group, but a little bit to the public, not so much. But uh, Solana has been a nice coin. It's obviously been extremely bullish. You haven't really, you know, during the whole uptrend, you, shorts have been, let's just say, not been the best trade. <laughs> it's obviously been looking for longs. And I was very well, uh, you know, trading that whole trend from all, all, all the way up, really. Uh, not interested in any shorts during the whole of it. The first time I got interested in shorts was on the 9th, uh, on the 9th of September. And that's when I said to my group, um, you know, I'm actually now looking for the drop on Solana. First time I've ever wrote this, I'm I'm finally looking for the drop. And that was obviously after we had saw, originally we saw, you know, you could say blow off top or, or the massive high volume that came in when we reached, uh, you know, 180, 190 the first time. And then you had that secondary really weak rise. That's where you started to form your really big bearish divergences on this rise. And overall, it just looked as if it was going to pull back. So that was the first time I was interested in the short. And well, um, first time I was interested in the short, first time Solana dropped 25%. So, I mean, anyway, th this is what I posted on the 9th. I'm looking for Sol 160. And obviously, at the time, that would have been pulling back to around the low of the CC. Uh, just an FYI, yesterday we hit 142. So you might think, Daniel, you said it was going to 160 and it dropped even lower. And yeah, that is true. Uh, but obviously on the 9th of September, I was very much ready and waiting for the pullback. Took my short position from $200 on Sol, recognizing the weakness. And I mean, if we obviously from the charts, we recognize weakness, but I mean, you know, peak euphoric times when you get Mike Tyson tweeting out, you know, is this now a good time to buy Solana? It's come on like... Yeah, the charts are bearish and you start getting those sort of things happening. Yeah, we're looking for a pullback. <laughs> With the same, it, it pulled back. <laughs> Funnily enough, but obviously originally while we were still trading at about $200 there on the 9th of September, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, for, for that heavy pullback here yeah, coming on 20% 20, 20 of the time, you know, looking for down on around 160 while I was looking for $160 on the 9th of September, after that, I done a Champions live stream, obviously, on this Sunday. And during that Champions live stream, I said to my team, this is while during the Champions live stream, Sol was still trading at $180. Uh, so we had not seen yet the drop. And I was telling my team, I no longer now think $160 will be a good buy opportunity. I think we're going to go down lower. Why was that? Because new data had come in. My perspective had changed based off of the, you know, based off of the new volume uh, that we had. We had a change in the point of control that had been moved higher on the chart. So my original plan of looking to buy 160 had changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm updating to trade with what the new data I have, e.g., sensible trading. Obviously, at the time, then I was, you know when I posted in then an update inside of the Discord, you know, I'm still staying in that short for now and I'm looking for the reaction off the one-to-one. -one. Obviously, that reaction was coming in, that one-to-one that -one here is coming in at about $144, okay? As you can see here, explain that in the Champions live stream where I went through quite a lot of different altcoins, Solana being one of them, staying in my short, looking for now down to around the one-to-one, -one, which is $140. 
and obviously yesterday we hit <laughs> obviously uh we hit one of we hit well basically low 140 dollars and it's again not often that we're wrong on that one as you can see hitting that one-to-one -one there updating my team and actually re reversing this well i'll go over now what happens so let me show you first of all the one-to-one -one. so i hope th i hope that's explained a little bit of the background here as we start to move into now the analysis originally 20 dollars to 200 dollars everything looking absolutely brilliant we start to see our weakness around 200 dollars first ever short that i took there on the solana and um you know we, we pull back all the way 30 percent to hit the one-to-one -one. so where is the one-to-one -one, you might ask it was the original all-time high to the first major low made up bringing it back up to that high and i was looking for this originally to be some sort of abc retracement eg we put in our a wave we put in our type of b and we're looking obviously back down for that c uh this could obviously still get an x wave and we head down lower again i'll cover that during the analysis but my original thoughts i just want to see an abc retracement i want to get in a good area of value um you know i personally had closed all my long so my long that i have now is a totally new one and you know, I just wanted to see a really good, nice, you know, decent retracement that I can make some money on the downside and then try and reverse it, but you know, and get it, get it back up. And uh, this was the thing we, we hit. Finally, we hit that level that I was waiting for. And this is the thing. This is what I mean by the analysis. You had to be patient because imagine you had longed here early, then you get stopped out and then it rises another 10 percent. Like you got to be you got to have your plan. you got to make your plan. you got to stick to the plan. Um, and that's really, really is what I've done. And then obviously yesterday after hitting, um, you know, $144, you didn't need to long the exact low because what we actually done was this retest. So this would have been about 10, honey. God knows why I trade at these <laughs> trading literally feels like 16 hours a day at the moment. But anyway, at 10 to 12 last night, we had this really nice retest of the CC. I'm alerting my team. Hey, you know, this, this is the retest of the CC. If you missed the low, what more of an opportunity do you want and this is all the way back down here by the way so you see this is the retest of the cc that i posted from the low to the high there if you missed the original long you retest that cc and then you get another 15 percent rise to the upside so it's like yeah you don't need to long the exact low you don't need to short the exact high if you're getting in on some of these retests then yeah, you, you, don't, you don't need to get the exact high or the exact low. The, the, the opportunities that you get on the retest are, are really nice. You have easily defined stop losses. You have easily defined targets, you know, and it's it's just very, very sensible trading. Let's just say that. Um, so obviously we have now seen this quite a nice push to the upside, bouncing off that one-to-one -one extension, which was obviously for me the main target there, and bouncing off that one-to-one -one extension. And we've obviously come back up into about 165. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, so what, what resistance are we seeing around here? Well, if we come back over to this spot pair, what we can see is off of this last range that we've been trading, uh, we we basically came back into the point of control. So you can see this is it, this is a really strong level, basically. This is a very, very important level to be aware of. And we obviously did get that very nice bounce to the upside, hit the point of control. Okay, so if we zoom in here. Uh, sometimes it you get rid of there we go or well, you zoom in here really closely you can see we come up into that point of control with a few wicks above it and now we are beginning to pull back a little bit but you could also say it ish swing failure pattern taking out the last time importantly though testing the point of control now that begins the pullback obviously the usdt pair not pulling back as hard but just very important to be aware of that we are into that that point of control so you've got a few ways that you could look to trade this. Obviously, if we are to get into, you know, maybe an ABCX, ABC, so maybe we're putting in some sort of WXY, we could put in a flat. All I would say is it's it's fairly early at the moment to decipher uh, whether we're going to put in an X wave or whether we have finished the correction. It's, it's very, 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 very early to decipher that. You know, it's basically impossible. So we have to think to ourselves, okay, what level of resistance would we want to see reclaimed to think to ourselves, okay, we're going higher, or levels lost to say, okay, we're likely to go lower. I think it's very important to acknowledge and not forget we have just tested that point of control. For me, of course, this is, I'm trading the tether pair, but I have recognized it's a very, 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 very sensible take profit at $160. Why? Because I recognized early on that that was a good level of support. So naturally, it's now, uh, you know, it's now going to, you know, flip it into a potential resistance. So for me, that is a take profit one. If we drop now, I'm really not bothered. I can get an entry lower. If we rise now, I've still got a little bit running on the long. Uh, but one could say it's a little bit more likely that we're going to pull back slightly. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we come over back over to this Tesla's pair. The Tesla, keep saying that, the, the, the tether pair. And what we could start to see here is obviously we've finished our one-to-one -one extension. That's bottomed out lo locally here about 140 cents. Obviously, we do have to keep our eye on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin, if Bitcoin drops, well, obviously this is going to drop. If Bitcoin rises, well, this is going to show a bit of strength. So you do have to pay attention to Bitcoin. Let's not forget that. I covered Bitcoin extensively yesterday in, the, in, 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 in a live stream. So I'm not going to focus on Bitcoin too much here. We already know what's happening with that channel. But what we can say is, you know, should we break back above one, you know, currently that's 168. If we get back above 168, what's the most sensible target to look at? I think we can all agree it's going to be coming back into this CC zone. I actually think this CC is a little bit maybe a little bit too high to look at for a first target. It's quite a move to the upside. As you think you've got bigger resistance, first of all, coming in at 180. Uh, so you really are going to be, well, I would be anyway, if we can get back above that 168, okay, next target for me to the upside would be 180. And then naturally, we're going to be looking up to that 192-ish dollars top of the CC. If we can breach that, and we get more volume coming in because we have to remember the volume died off. You know, the volume in comparison, the volume really has died off here. So we want to see the volume coming back. If we are breaching 190, really, we really need to see the volume coming in. If not, I think you put in an X wave, which looks like a WXY type correction. And we get our W, X, and we come, you know, we make a new low again. That would be my expectation should we get really low volume push. Um, to be honest with you. But should the volume come in, should it start to look better then, and we break through that CC with strength, then of course we can look to another all-time high. I think that's safe to say we got that real big, you know, $200. Don't forget about it. If we reclaim $200 on more strength, why are we not looking back up towards 250 I mean, that's what I'd be looking for. Locally here, there's a lot, lot, lot of work to get through before we start looking for $250. We first of all have to get through the local see, you know, the local point of control, which is clearly resistance at the moment, is clearly formed a rejection and it's very 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 much a take profit on longs i you know that's just it. i have done i have taken profit there so um yeah i also still hold the 200 dollars short for a bit of a hedge right now i want to see that point of control reclaimed before i close the short but anyway uh on on the tether pair we obviously know that our local resistance you know bigger resistance i want to say is 180 dollars and we obviously got the point of control if we break to the downside the, th the thing on the the thing to the downside here is we've, we've really not got much support at all because of the speed that this moved up it does mean that you basically don't form as much support on the way down so this arguably could be a bit of a problem if it starts to lose support you've obviously looking at then your next uh fibonacci extension which is coming in 114 dollars you could argue around this order you know 110 ish dollars would be your next level to the downside that's a heavy 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 retracement though um but you know on the grand scheme of things you know it wouldn't be so bad of a retracement if you're an early you know you've been trading this for a while but you know it would punish a lot of traders should we retrace to one 100 you know i think you got the support here around the what you know the 161a and then you know coming into your order blocks about 110 dollars is your major support to the downside so the way that i would the way that i am literally approaching um solana right now is i have my short from $200, which I don't want to close until I see real a sign of strength on this. Even you're getting back above a major resistance, I'm, I'm more than comfortable to hold that short. Or simultaneously, I do still hold the long off of that uh, back test of the CC. Uh, my average fill was actually just above this. I got in slightly later, but still down around the 140s. Uh, and, you know, should we actually now come on and change this market structure? I will really simply just get, I'm more than happy to get stopped out at break even on the rest of the trade. Hit my take profit one at $160, move my stop loss to entry. If this does in fact drop, hey, I get stopped out for the rest of entry and I let the, the short run. Should we start to reclaim some resistance and support, specifically the point of control, uh, obviously onto the, the tether pair here about 180, then naturally I'm going to be looking for higher. I can close that short position and let the wrong run. So yes, I do simultaneously hold a long and a short, short from um, $200, long from $148 was the average fill. Uh, so I do hold both of those positions at the same time. And I'm now waiting to see the outcome of this. Yeah, this is a trading from a, a position of strength. I hold the cards now. I know exactly what I know. I, you know, I know exactly what I want to see. I know exactly what to look for for a sign of strength. I know what to look for for a sign of weakness. Yeah, I am in control of my trades. I'm in control of this chart and I'm going to play my games. 
Um, you know, no, so I'm now waiting for the market and you know, the market can come to me. The market can come to me. That's the position of strength you always want to be in. Yeah, you are in control of the cards. You are the casino. Only trade the highest probabilities. And really, this, this is a walk in the park. It is a walk in the park. It's very, very, very nice trading. Okay, it's not being difficult. Um, obviously, if you want those heads up early on, you know, if you wanted to know to short Solana at $200, well, uh, if I'm jumping into the shorts, like I said to my team, it's not often that I'm wrong. And once again, I was right on Solana there. So, um, you know, if you want those sort of updates, chartchampions.com, more than happy to help you. And, you know, obviously I might really quickly cover Tezos because Tezos yesterday pulled back. Uh, again, it was a level that we were looking and waiting for. Again, this is pulling back now, but what you have to remember is this is the thing. If you can get in your initial trade, if you can get in that take profit one, if you get stopped out on the rest, you know, it's okay. We back tested that key level for a 10% bounce to the upside. So it's like just knowing the levels to trade I mean, how brilliant is that? Hitting the key level, 10% bounce to the upside. That's 10% bounce. It's, it's, in, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you just got to remember sometimes, know the levels, trade the levels, don't get scared. And, uh, you know, it, it, it works out nice. It works out nice, my friends. Um, what I will say is if you want to see, I'm going to start uploading some few things on Instagram because obviously there's an unreal amount of scammers. So if you want to see some more content from me, I'm going to post that over on Instagram. That is chart champions spelt correctly, <laughs> not with the O and I the wrong way around. That's chart champions spelt correctly. 12,000 followers. There are an unreal amount of scammers. So I'm going to try and promote this Instagram a bit more. Uh, the ones with 20,000 thousand followers are literally the you know fake accounts so be careful with that this is the real account chart champions uh, i'm going to start to release um you know trading insights behind the scenes footage examples uh on instagram so if you want to see that give us a follow over on there and that's all i'll ask for yeah give us a follow over on instagram um and you can see the behind the behind the scenes footage of the trades so if that sounds good you know what to do smash the like button as hard as you can and if you want to see a different altcoin Leave it in the comments down below and uh, yeah, we'll take a look and um, maybe it's XRP because people seem to love that at the moment. Uh, if you do, comment it and, and we'll see what wins. So thank you ever so much, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've understood the processes that I'm going through when I'm originally looking for shorts, when I'm originally looking to you know switch those back into longs. We're waiting for the retest, we're waiting for the confirmations, we're hitting take profits and then it's wait wait for the market, yeah? So it's a, it's a combination of having a plan, executing the plan and then having patience, yeah? Three steps might sound easy when I say it. Of course, I understand it's not easy when you're a beginner, even an intermediate trader. And that's why we are here to help. Yeah. So, you know, if you want that assistance, if you want that help, come over to the website and, uh, you know, get the mentorship. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you ever so much and have a good day. Cheers. Goodbye.